So I'm in the dahlia patch today and what we're going to be doing is tagging the dahlias. So I've got my tagging tape here, which is like a plastic, it's like a flexible tape and I've got a garden marker and I'm going to mark all the dahlias. I've written them all down in the book and the tags that I had on them have actually either rotted away or blown away. So I'm gonna tag them to make sure that I know what's what when I come to dig up the tubers because the flowers have pretty much finished now. We're still getting a few of the Cafe Olay blooms. They have been the standout of the season really. They were the first to bloom and they're the last ones standing. So beautiful. The colours, they change from like a honey cream coffee colour and then occasionally they'll throw these beautiful pink blooms. Yeah, they're lovely. Those ones are beautiful too. They're pretty well blown out, but they're just gorgeous to look at. These are my dahlia cuttings that I've taken so far and I've just popped those in some rooting liquid and I've popped them into pots. I just take cuttings, I take all sorts of cuttings. I don't necessarily follow any rules. There are a lot of other videos out there on YouTube that show you how to do this properly and I just do it my own way and I take all sorts of cuttings. I can only go from how I do it and I've had a lot of success with it so um, I'll show you the things that I use to do it. In the jug there is just a bit of plant starter. I just use a natural one and when I've taken a cutting I just dip it in that and put it into the pot and then I use a garden marker. I find that the Sharpies, they fade and they wash off. So I've invested in a couple of garden markers this year and I just uh, write a little sign on these icy pole sticks, flagging tape and the cutters that I use. When I take a cutting, I'll just take this part of the plant, I'll cut it off here and I just trim off any of these larger leaves and just leave enough of the leaves on top so that it can get the sun and photosynthesize and it gets enough energy then to, to grow roots. And when they're in the pot, I just bottom water them so that it encourages the root growth. But I'll take cuttings from all over the plant. I take side shoots, I take top shoots, and I just give anything a try. And I really haven't had anything not take. And I do that across most of my plants and find that I can multiply my plants very easy that way. We're coming to the end of the dahlia season now. So you can see here the dahlias, the last few, that are coming off the bushes. They're a bit misshapen and you know, they're not really that nice. They're still beautiful in their own way, but they're very blown out. You can see there the center of that one. Sorry about the lighting here, guys. We haven't got a lot of light in this room. But so. the first thing that I wanted to show you was um, the update on my hydroponics on my let pot system and how wonderful it's been and I'll just move you down there you can see on here I'll just lift it up a bit you can see all the lettuce on there so this is about it's about a month maybe five weeks into it and we've actually eaten all this lettuce that was on here and I've got some dill that I've left in there growing. I'll lift it up and I'll show you the root system on here. It's unbelievable, guys. Look at that. So I've had heaps of success with it. I'm really happy with it. Growing hydroponically was something that I'd never done before. It's a real eye-opener to me. And the fact that it's got the natural 
ingredients that's what sold me on it because I know a lot of hydroponics they use a lot of chemicals a lot of the tomatoes and um, herbs and things like that that you get in the supermarket they're all grain and chemicals <clears throat> I left those in to show you but what I'm going to do now with these little open bits there what I've got I actually saved all the plugs out of here I just gave them a bit of a wash you can actually buy new ones of those but what I'm going to do is I'm wanting to start some dahlia cuttings because we've come to the end of the season here now and there's a few special cuttings that I would like to try and propagate so I'll just move that get that out and I'll show you how I'm gonna do it I also have an Instagram and I post a lot of stuff on Instagram you know things that I don't put in videos and that and what I did was I explained how I'd been growing dahlia cuttings I do a lot of things differently than what the norm says you know that you should the experts say that you should be doing I just give it a go that's me I'm what you call a rebel gardener I stick to some rules but I think that the way the weather is and you know people get scared they get scared to try things because it's written in books that you know you shouldn't do it this way or that way my thing is I just give it a go and if it doesn't work you've really got nothing to lose but anyway I've pinched out the top of this dahlia so and I've had it in water so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip off these bottom leaves here and I'm going to cut off that one as well so you can see what's left there and if you want to you can also cut that leaf off there the more that you cut off the more of the energy that can go into growing the roots on the plants if you leave too many leaves on it's going to be a lot harder for it to grow now you can see right in there right there there's a little new shoot coming from there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out one of these it's got the little sponge in it and I'm going to put that down push that down in as far as I can and I'm just going to sit that in there so I'm going to do that with this one also so I'm just going to cut off all those extra leaves again the less leaves you've got on there the better so we just get another one of these little baskets with the sponge and I'm just going to put the, those in there so this is Devon Seattle that is a beautiful dahlia and I was given a pot with that in it so I'm not sure how many tubers it's got on it so what I want to do is I, I want to try and reproduce some more of that and I've also got this vase here I've got some more so I'm, I'm just going to cut those as well while we're here this is a bit more established this plant and it's also been eaten by some beetles there um, out the side of the this plant here you can see little fresh shoots coming out the sides they're the ones that I'm going to use so I'm just going to cut that and see what I can find that I can use all right this one here I'll give that a go as well so I'll cut the sides off that I'll cut the big ones off there and this I've just left it I don't know, I'll put it up there so you can see uh, the nodules on that one it's not going to focus put it there so we'll just try that one also so I'll just shove that down in there that one doesn't want to fit in I might just try that straight in the basket and see how that works and I'm going to put these ones on this side they're a different variety this one's called Winky Whopper which is a beautiful one as well I've got another cutting now just going to cut off those excess leaves cut off that one and we're left with fairly small 
one. I'm going to put that into there. That'll fit in nicely. Pop that in there. And I think I can get one more off the top. So I'm going to do this, continue doing this with other varieties that I've got. And I think it'll be a really good way to get some cuttings over winter because normally I would have like I've taken a lot of cuttings already earlier in the season and it was a lot warmer had heaps of success with those but this is something that I want to try so I'll keep you updated on this and this great little machine I've got a discount code for one of these I'll put all the details down below if you want to get one for yourself I've just really enjoyed it and you know to be able to use it for flowers and you know veggies herbs all sorts of things it, it's got a multitude of uses and it doesn't take up very much space at all i'll put the original video down below where i did the unboxing of it and you can have a look at that okay i'm back again and i've got another parcel that's arrived in the mail i'm just so grateful when somebody takes the time and the effort to send me something i just want to acknowledge it because it does mean a lot to me so this one here i'll just open this up now and i'll tell you who it's from it smells beautiful that's some beautiful handmade soap from tina at chimney creek farm beautiful i'll put a link to her channel below it's actually called chimney creek farm and willows wonder so thank you so much tina i actually seen some videos of you making this beautiful soap i will treasure that thank you so much that's just absolutely beautiful and so kind of you tina thank you i appreciate that so thanks guys thanks everyone for your support i really appreciate it and i shall see you next time okay bye <laughs>